Hi everyone, welcome back, it's Deborah, and today I want to just show you some of the things that you might have lying around your house that you can use in a junk journal. So a few months ago, my husband cleaned up and he gave me this tub of stuff because I said, don't throw anything out. I wanna have a look at what you're throwing out so that I can maybe repurpose some of it in my junk journals. So I've pulled a few things out of that box. I also have pulled some other things out of my stash. Now these are probably, um, they are purchased items, but I'm gonna tell you how you could possibly find them around your house that you might already have without actually going out and purchasing them. So I've got, as I said, a big thing. Now I start first of all with this. Now this is Amazon packaging. This stuff is fantastic. It's nice and hard. It's also already got a fold in it. And in this case, it's even got a flap. So I could cut that down and I could make a journal cover out of that. Now, obviously it's way too big for a journal cover at the moment, but there's no reason why I can't trim it down. And because it's already got these sort of, um, the corrugated cardboard inside, if I run my score line down another section, I'll get a nice fold in there. Or I might wanna sort of cut it off here and just use a little bit of this to flap it over and then trim it top and bottom to make it smaller. So don't throw your Amazon packaging away. The next thing is a paper bag. So this is just your standard bag. And I got this, this is actually a new one because I had it to, um, you know, I use it for gifts and things. I decorate them up. But if somebody's given you the gift with the paper bag like this, or any sort of paper bag really, any size, then you can repurpose it. Now, often if I buy things from some smaller boutiques and things like gifts and things, they will give you a paper bag to carry your stuff in. And if they do, then hold on to it and repurpose it. Now you can repurpose this into a cover as well. These craft paper bags are really strong and heavy, so they will make a lovely cover. They also have this great gusset down the bottom, so I'm not sure what I'm doing with this one yet, but the gusset means that they also have a side on them like that. So they do make a fantastic journal cover. You can repurpose the handles as well. I wouldn't cut them off. I would just cut down into here. See how that's got a tape across it? If I cut there, you can then pull this out and you can use this in a similar way that you would use ribbon or string or something like that. Now, speaking of string, I'm sure we've all got some string in our drawers, kitchen string. This one's a little bit thicker, but string can be used just like ribbon. You can use it to tie a journal up, you can also use it if you're collaging. So if you sort of wrap it around in some loops like this, and then you can glue it down onto a surface and cut the ends. And that looks quite good then if you've added, you know, you've got book page and other things and you can add some string on top. You can also use it um, to wrap around a journal. So you, if you had your journal, you could wrap it around like this and then tie it up in a knot. You can also use it in string closures and a lot of these um, things I'm talking about are on my YouTube channel, so you can just go and search for those. But string is another good one. The other one that I like to use for covers or when I want a hard surface of some kind is an old board game. So this is just an old Monopoly board. And again, super, super thick and quite large. So you can cut a good sized journal cover out of that. You can see here, I've taken that chunk off and I've probably cut the other one down as well, but these are great. So if you've got any old games that you or the kids no longer use, or somebody in your family has some, this was actually given to me by a family member, the whole Monopoly game, because their kids are growing up now and they don't use it. And so I've used that and repurposed that, better than throwing it away into the dump. Then we have a raft of other things. Now, other paper bags. So this is just a little paper bag. It's got dots on it. It's quite cute. And so I could make a pocket out of that. If I don't want that name and branding on the bottom, then I can fold it up like this and that will create a pocket in there and then a pocket in there. You can trim the top of it off if you don't like that um, roughness, you know, the rough edge up there. I don't mind that. If you put a little bit of paper or some washi tape or something over here and I wouldn't even bother covering the bag itself because I like the dots that are on it. 
I always like the dots. The other way would be to put it this way so you didn't have that branding on there. And then just make sure when you turn it up, you either cover the branding or you don't turn it up that much so the branding will be covered. The other thing would be an old birthday card. So I like this because it's super thick, both sides of it. And by gluing around the inside, you could make a pocket. So you could have a pocket in here, put something on the front and stick it down on the journal. And the other thing you could do would be to cut the back part of it off, cut it in half and then fold the coloured side together. And then you have a lovely journaling spot because the cardboard is really nice and thick but old greeting cards. If the front of them is nice, you could even fussy cut the fronts of them out. Like if you've got one with flowers or something like that, butterflies, whatever, you could you actually use the front of the birthday card. Then some things that were in my husband's thing is this. Now this is off a shirt, I believe, or maybe a jacket, I'm not sure. Let's pull it apart and see. So the first thing is, this is a rod and gun shirt. It's got a great piece of leather in there and you can see here that I've got lots of those little bits. I think I've got a few that are actually the rod and gun. So this leather is great. You can make that into a little, again, another little um, sort of spot with the collage, you know, fold it up and put it down. You could wrap it around. So you've got it wrapped around some buttons. You could even use it to if you've got a, uh, a pokey tool, just poke it through and tie it up so that the button, it becomes the thread of the button. Lots of uses for things like that. Then this here, now inside this one is a little pocket. So I've already got a little pocket there. It's got the little dog on the bottom, which is the rod and gun symbol. That's the brand of the shirt. I've got a few of those because he had a few rod and gun shirts. And you can use these as they are. Now, if you don't want the dog, then you could cover it up and also repurpose the little bit of leather that was on there and use that to close up the pocket. So you could tuck a little note in there and then tie this up. You would obviously have to cut this down. I'm not going to do that at the moment because I'm not sure what I want to do with this. But how cute does that look to have a little bow up the top here? And then your little message is inside, nice and safe and sound. So as I said, I do have a couple of those. With this part here, I would just recover this. So this is great because it's got an actual brad on one side. And again, it can, you know, tie up nicely. And so if you've got some more papers, so if I cut some papers in this size, put them in and then punched a hole through, and then I could tie them up there. Now, obviously I need to cover this here, but all the inside is just black, so I don't have to cover that. It's got the cute little puppy on the other side as well. And obviously I need to take the, the price tag off. Now, I'm not sure that this is just gonna pull off. Yeah, it's that old, it's been there for a while, but I would cover that with some paper so that I could use that again. And then with this one, it actually tucks in here. So it's got a little gap in there, and then I can tuck it in there and then we'll would be able to open this up so that I have a nice little journaling spot in there. And lots of similar things like that that you could do with these or any tags really. It doesn't have to be these tags. And I've got a whole heap here. Now this one is pretty cool. It's also got this sort of button thing on it that's stuck in there. So that's a nice little black disc. And then this here with the stretch fabric on it, it's a nice thick piece of card so I could po possibly cover that in some paper or some washi tape and I could use that in a collage or something like that. I'll put a, a word, a quote on there. There's lots of things I can do with a shape like that. And this bit here is another one of these little things that opens up. So it tucks in there and then you've got the opening up. And oh, this is the extra spare little things that go in the collar of the business shirts. So I would even use those. I could use those in some collage. They're just a really thin plastic. You could even put some little quotes on there and tuck them back into their spot. That's a nice little neat thing there. And then you've got the bigger one, which again is a really thick piece of card. And it is black on the back. So you wouldn't even have to necessarily cover that. You could stick that down on the back and put something on top of it. And then finally, I've got this little packet here. 
So this one again opens up and it doesn't open up all the way. So it's another little pocket. So look out on your clothing for all of these sorts of pocket things that you can repurpose in your junk journals. Here's a couple more examples. These ones are from Camel and that is a nice little piece of craft paper. If you like the camel, you could use the camel as is, or you could cover the inside and not the outside and just have that as a little swing tag. This also has a fantastic piece of old twine on it. Well, it wasn't old, but it's old now because it's quite old, this one. So it's got that great piece of twine. And then in here, this is a little envelope and it's stuck down still and it's actually the camel button. So when you buy these shirts, the camel shirts, they're a man's brand. I think they only do men, but I've never bought from them. You actually get the camel buttons in this little envelope. Now, you could just use that as it is and tuck it into your journal as a little sort of thing, particularly if you were doing like a sewing journal or something like that, but it's just adorable. And I don't think, I think the buttons will just be the, the normal sort of creamy colored buttons. So I wouldn't even take that out of there. I'll just use that as is. So that's a couple more of the branding. Now these are also great because they are actual cloth. And again, you've got a fantastic eyelet, a nice piece of leather on these ones. There's three of them here. I love how they've done this. So it's got this like flap and then in here, there's a little pocket. How cute is that? So you can make these yourself, of course, but since they're already coming on the clothing, why not just use them? And even this one here, I love this. They've bothered to put a buttonhole. This is just the branding and they've put a buttonhole there, which is fantastic. So if you've got a button on your journal, you could button that, you know, put this on the button and use it. And I love the font that's on here. I love the whole look of that. It would just really enhance a journal. You could also put it into your journal and sew it down. You can tea dye it or coffee dye it or use some ink to dye it if you don't like this sort of color. I think that's adorable. So I would just use that as is. And then these have also got the price still on them, but I'll have to get that off. And oh, that's come off fine, actually. Yeah, it's a bit stuck. It's like a double-sided tape, this one, and that's fine. I'll get that off later. And again, all sewing around with that cute little pocket and that would be a nice little spot for some journaling. And it looks like I've got three of those. I'll probably find more. I haven't even gone through the rest of the box yet, but fantastic. Now, I know that these, these are Rod and Gun and Camel and things like that, but lots of companies do this. Even the cheaper companies do this. Now, these shirts were $49 Australian and that's not too bad, but you can actually get these on other items. Like I've bought things from, you know, Kmart and Big W and things like that. And they also have nice little things like this on them. The other place you can get things like this is from jeans. So if you've got old jeans, have a look at the little bit, you know, the tag that's sewn on them. And if it's cloth or leather, then just unpick it or cut around it if you're getting rid of the jeans. And then you can repurpose that into your journals. Now I have a photograph. There was a number of old photos in there and I'm keeping this because I thought this might be really nice as a base for something on a page and I could make this into a pocket and add some other things on top of it if I wanted to. So that's why I haven't gotten rid of the photos. Now this here is just a piece of um, card. Now I'm not sure if I need that, but this is it came with the bow tie. And this bow tie I bought for my husband because I thought it was adorable. And it's actually a piece of fabric that I have on a quilt that I have here at home. And I saw this when I was out at an art and craft market many years ago and I bought it for him. He only wore it a couple of times. I don't think he really liked it, but I thought it was adorable. And now I'm gonna repurpose that into my journals. Now the, what you could do with this, if your journal was the right size, is you could use this as your closure because it's actually got this hook and um, eye on it. So it actually can close up. And with this one, because it's a bow tie, it can actually grow as well to be smaller or larger, depending on what you want. So if I have a large journal, I may be able to repurpose this as the closure of that journal. And I think that would look adorable. Otherwise I could just use it as is 
or even just pull it into pieces and use it because it's fantastic for that sort of thing and really nice fabric on that one. The other thing that you might have are bags. Now often when you buy something you'll get a little bag. This one is a lovely little linen sort of mesh bag. It's not, it looks to be a cotton, it's from Fossil and it does have a drawstring on it but you don't have to use that drawstring and again you could use this to put some journaling or some other trinkets in within your journal. You could even use this to house a little journal. If you have a little journal or a little journaling book within your journal you could pop it in here and use it. So keep an eye out and go through your things for bags like that. Now we have some other packaging here. This one is from Nomination but it doesn't matter what it's from. I thought I had a couple of these actually. Never mind, I might find it later. This one is, uh, basically you can use it as an envelope. You can see in there I can open it up. It's got a base on it and you could use that and stick it down. Just cover the stuff up that you wanted to cover up. The other thing you could do if you wanted to would be to pull it apart a little bit. I think I would just end up using this as an envelope. Now if I wanted to use the other side I could because it's a really, really nice yellow in there. So if you just wanted to use the inside, and it doesn't look like the inside's got any branding on it, so I may actually pull it open and then try and turn it in the other way if I can so that I can use that bright yellow. I've got some of those in a couple of sizes, I think. Now, of course, envelopes. So you get envelopes in all shapes and sizes with cards and things like that, and that's a great envelope. This one's a little bit wrecked because it's been sitting in a tub for ages. But you can still use the outside and cover it with some book page or something and use the, the fact that it is a functioning envelope as a place to put things within your journal. Then I have some pieces, some cards from a game. And the other thing you could use would be playing cards. So this is just a flash card and it's quite large and it's um, got a bit of an odd shape, but that's good. If you get some gesso and paint over it or put some book page or some old pages over the top of it, you can use that. And the same with this little one. If you cover it or paint it and then, you know, put some paper down, you can use these as journaling spots. You could also use this one as a pocket. So you'd have to decorate it up and then you'd have a pocket to put something in in your journal. So don't dismiss the power of a kid's game. So if you've got any of those at home, go through them and have a look. Now I'm sure we've also got lots of these at home. These are buttons that you get when you buy articles of clothing with buttons on them and they always give you a couple of spares. Sometimes they're just the little tiny white sort of creamish whitish ones. These ones are larger and it must have been something that had different size buttons on it because I've got a big one and two small ones. They usually put them in these little packets so that's great because you don't have to take them out. You can just store them like that and then use them. I like these ones because they're, I think they're navy or they might be black, but they're quite dark. So keep those buttons. I've always kept those buttons anyway, you know. Now, what have we got here? Oh, <laughs> this is this is old. This is a, a ticket. Now, I keep all my tickets and things and my husband's obviously kept this too. This is actually for the Chicago trolley and we went there in uh, 2006 six maybe no yes it must have been two. I'm just trying to think yeah 2006 we were in Chicago and oh no look at that 19th of, the, of March 2004 that's right we went before then a couple of years before then to the US as well so these are great especially this one because it's the Chicago trolley I mean the back is sort of not probably something I'd use but I might cover the back in something or use this in a collage or just use this as a journaling spot and put some white on the back of it. So any tickets that you've got from visiting places, I mean you're probably not going to Chicago at the moment because we can't, but I'm sure when we can again at some point or even travelling in Australia, just save your, your tickets and even the ticket stubs, they look fantastic in collages as well. Don't forget about your stamps. So when you get a letter, you can just grab the stamps off them and keep them in a little packet and then you can use them up when you're ready to put them in your journals. They're also something that I use quite a bit of. This is tissue paper. So when you get 
things. Sometimes they'll wrap them in tissue. Again, if you're buying a gift or if you're buying a, you know, a nice shirt from somewhere or you're buying some glassware, they'll often just pop some tissue around them. Don't throw it away, keep it. It makes a really good surface. So if you want to mute something down, let's see as an example, that you wanted to mute that down, putting some tissue and gluing that with some matte medium over the top looks great. You can also scrunch it up and glue it and paint over the top of it to create texture on a page. If you're doing that in your journals or you know in your either junk journals or art journals. So it's a fantastic thing to keep and I always keep bits of tissue paper when I get it or any sort of paper that comes where things are wrapped in it. I keep those because I find that they are good to use in your journals and they're free. You get them for nothing. If somebody you know, send you a, gives you a gift or send you a gift or something, keep the packaging and the internal packaging as well because you'll get them for nothing. This is a journal, an old journal, and he hasn't used most of it. So I think this is one of the travel journals that I got him at some point and he did do a little bit of journaling in it. But look at all this lovely, lovely cream coloured paper. I've also got some tickets in there. <laughs> okay, so this is when we went obviously somewhere in 2004. Yep, this is Brisbane to LA. So use up your, your plane tickets and use up your ticket stubs from other places. We've got a whole heap here too, some more plane tickets and different things. Here's a old piece of, what is this from? The Silk Company. Ah, oh, so that'll be in Thailand, Jim Thompson's house, which I know he loved. That's why he's kept that. Love this old map. You can reuse this old map in here. You can reuse the written part just for you know, background pieces within your journals or when you're doing a masterboard or something like that. And I love the picture on the front. So I would probably repurpose this whole book into a little junk journal because I really love this and I probably wouldn't touch it other than that. It's already got this on it and I would just replace that because that's now sort of had its day. It's very, you know, it doesn't have any stretch or elasticity to it anymore. I might cover some of the back to get rid of this, but I love the front. So that's really good size. It's probably about an Oh, maybe an A, just under an A5, somewhere between an A6, A5 size. Nice and thick, so I can get a fair few pages in. And all of these I'm going to repurpose as space to write within various journals. Because there's lots of good paper there that I don't want to throw away. When we're talking about games, any of these packets that you might get from a game. Now this is an old travel trivia game, but these would make a really good thing to house a little journal in. So if you make a journal that's this big, you can cover this up and use the, the box structure as the base. And then you would have a nice little box to house your journal in. And little journals are really cute. Also makes a great gift and means that it's not too much work to get a journal finished to put into something like this and you could just cover that with anything that you've got. You could paint it, you could again use your old book pages or whatever you've got and you know if you're using things that are relatively cheap then probably book page is the best thing to use because I'm sure that you know we've all got an old book or two hanging around the house which you don't necessarily have to keep them anymore. A lot of it I do online now, I read online you know on my Kindle but that would be something that, you know, I don't throw those things away. In fact, I have a whole tub of those little boxes, which is probably too much, but that's just what I do. Now, the other thing is if you've got something like this, this is an old sort of diary thing from work. It's not mine. I think it must have been my husband's. But anyway, it's great because it's got lots and lots of paper in it. It's also got this really cool thing for month and year at the back. I think I've got a couple of them, yeah. And that's good for journaling in. So you can also use something like that. Obviously it came in a ring binder, but I've thrown the ring binder out. So don't forget about, um, you know, if something's not been written on, keeping the contents of things like that and getting rid of the rest. And that just uh, sits in with my papers. I'll pop it in there. Then we have a system card. Now, 
I have a lot of system cards. You might not be obsessed with system cards the way I am, but I'm sure you've got a few hanging around the house. And these are great. You can do index card a day, that system card or index card, it's the same thing. You can do lots and lots of things with a system card. So if you've got any of those, don't forget that you can use them in your journals in a variety of ways. Now the next thing would be business cards. And these are obviously my business cards. But if you've got any old business cards, you can cover one side of them in something and use the back of them as a journaling spot. They're really good size for doing that. And these ones are not the super expensive ones. They're just the cheap ones I get from Vistaprint. But they're really, really good because they're nice and thick. These ones have a bit of a gloss on them. You might have others that are a matte finish. But whatever they are, they're really good as things to use in your junk journal. So don't forget about them. Now this might be a bit strange, but when I buy my stamps, I get them in a packet of 10 or 20 and they are sticky backed and always on the surroundings, they have a border on them. And so if I take this border off and just get it up because it'll be sticky. This is non-stick, this piece here. But if I take this border up, and I've just cut a couple off, but you can get your whole sheet. My, the others had stamps on them still. Once you've removed your stamps, you get this really nice little sort of um, stencil. So there's no reason why you shouldn't look at using things like that. And there may, other be, um, there may be other things. I'm just not sure. I was trying to think what else comes like this. But I thought the stamp one would be really good. Because if I put that down there and take a bit of ink and then I run that ink over the top, it will act just like a stencil. Let me get this ink going on here. Now this is just a test piece. I'd probably put it on a nicer piece of paper if I were going to use it in a journal. Maybe plain, maybe some of that plain paper that I found in that book before. But if you run that over here, and then when you pick it up, I'm now peel this off, you get this really cute little stamp edge thing. Isn't that adorable? And then what you could do is you could make faux stamps out of that. So if you just cut around that, just let me cut this out very quickly. And then you can decorate that up. Now, if you were going to use stamps like number stamps and other things, to, you know, stamped, um, what are they called? Um, stamp marks, you know, where you have your postcard and things like that. If you were using those on something like this, I would probably do that before I cut it out. But I just wanted to cut it out and show you that I think that that's adorable. I love how you get that fluted edge on there. And that was basically free. You know, you may as well just use it. If it's free, you've paid for it, why not use it? So that's an idea for your stamp edges if you get those packets of stamps that have got the um, sticky back on them. Some of this next lot are not things that you have around the house because I've bought these but I'm going to give you the option for what you might have in the house to use. One of them would be safety pins. So don't forget about your safety pins. They're fabulous if you've got things you want to dangle. You can put the safety pin on there and dangle it from the, the bottom of the safety pin and they're really good. And also when you buy, certainly I know if I buy a dress or something, they have a little teeny tiny safety pin on them. Often they'll be the ball pin and frequently they'll be in black so they won't be silver or gold, they'll be black and they're really good too. So don't forget about your safety pins. Now these ones are a, a different sort of safety pin but I just pulled them out to remind me to tell you about those. And speaking of things to dangle, these are pre-purchased. These are Tim Holtz, but there's no reason why if you've got some old jewellery, you can't pull it apart and use the little things because you'll often find that your old jewellery has got little dangly bits on it. They'll also have these things here, which you'll find in old jewellery. Now these are jump rings. So they basically are like a split ring, so they can be opened up. But you'll often find a very similar thing that you'll have on an old piece of jewellery. So if you've got old costume jewellery I'm talking about, don't start ripping up your grandmother's pearls or anything like that. 
um, but if you've got costume jewellery then why not look at how you might repurpose that in a junk journal. So even though I've bought these I actually do have a lot of pieces of costume jewellery that I need to go through and, and pull apart and then I just store things in these little bottles even if it's purchased or not that's kind of where I store my things. Now the other thing to be on the lookout for would be hinges. So anything that's got a hinge on it, I'm sure there'll be things that you've got around the house that may have a hinge on them. Maybe it's like an old little um, set of drawers or something and hinges are great. So don't forget to repurpose hinges, even if you're not repurposing the item. If you have larger hinges, say they came off a larger cupboard, that would be fabulous for the cover of a junk journal that you could be able to open it up and have these large hinge on there. Just thought about that because I think I have some large hinges actually. Now the other thing is everyday paper clips. Now these are not everyday paper clips. These are little baby paper clips, little Tim Holtz ones. But just your paper clips that you've got, just your everyday box standard paper clip is really good to use in a junk journal. And you can decorate those up. You can change colour by using alcohol inks or something on them. Just leave them silver as they are and dangle things off them or tie some ribbon off them and they'll look pretty like that. Lots and lots of things that you can do with the paper clips. The next thing is a thimble. Now this is a Tim Holtz thimble. But if you've got an old thimble or you know somebody who has, you ask if you know anyone who sews or if your mum sews or whatever, then have a look and see if they've got a thimble and these are great so I use these if you use them upside down they make a really good faux flower pot and you can use them up this way as well they make a good hat or something but as a flower pot you can put that on the front of a journal because this is about the right size for a thimble it might be a tiny little bit smaller than a normal thimble but you can use it to decorate the front of the journal or you can use it in a piece like an art piece that's you know you keep on a shelf or hang on the wall or something but keep an eye out for thimbles if you know anyone who sews then oh, I'll just do the button first so I've pulled out a button again this is a Tim Holtz button but buttons come from everywhere so you might have a button you know you get them on birthday cards you know they'll say 40 years old today or whatever and you can repurpose those often they'll have a pin on them but you can just either leave the pin in and clip it on or take the pin off or out of it completely they should pull out and then you can leave it as is or you can change the front of it by putting some stuff on it and making it you know a 3d piece so you can use that so any of those old sorts of you know metal buttons I'm sure that you might have some of those or come across some of those at some point and then the final thing are watches and watch parts so I've got a couple of watch parts here in fact I've got this little one here this is a little piece of wire from a watch part that's good too it looks like a little ring it's not it's actually from a watch and then this is the internal part of a watch part I'll give you a tip on these don't pull that coil out because if you pull that coil out it's the coil that keeps the watch going and it will just completely spring out everywhere and be totally useless and I tell you that from experience but these are fantastic if you've got some cogs then these are just like cogs except they're from a watch so if you've got old watches or you know anyone who's got some old watches they don't want anymore prise them open and pull out the inside you also get all the little bits and pieces now I don't have any of those on the table at the moment but they're really good too for using in your collages or in your 3D things if you're making an art piece or an um, art journal or whatever. So don't forget about the watch parts. And then the last thing I've got is an actual fob watch. Now I don't know if you would have any of these. Again, I've purchased these. I got them a whole bunch of them off eBay years ago. But old fob watches are great. That's with the inside taken out. And they make a fantastic little place where you can do a vignette and this is the piece that goes on top of that so that just clicks on there I think it's just clicking it's not quite it might not be the right one but anyway they usually have a front piece like that and then you get the piece with the the actual watch mechanism in it which again is another thing that I do use for things if I'm doing an art piece or, or a vignette or something but this here the center of that is great in fact I think um, Tim Holtz used to actually have 
these empty watch containers but this is actually a real one and I might even have, have some of his um, a couple of his as well somewhere around the, the place but I don't know where at the moment so if you do have any access to something like this then you know I would uh, seek that out and put it into your stash and you may never want to use it it's hard to use things like this because it's just so lovely and then I think well I may as well use it the other thing that these are really good for is making Christmas decorations for your tree so you can make a really nice little vignette in there with you know a name or a photo or whatever you want and because it's got the this part here it'll hang really nicely on the tree it'll also hang on the wall if you don't want to specifically just use it at, at Christmas or as I said it will go sort of on the front of the junk journal it can be used for a lot of things but old watches are just lovely I have a bit of a thing for old watches so I have quite a few of these these fob watch cases and other watches and clocks because I just think that they're very very cool so that's it for today I've just kind of gone through the things that I think you may have around your house or you may be able to get access to that aren't going to um, necessarily cost you money because you've already got them and I hope that helps you when you're looking for things for your junk journals. Thank you for joining me. This is Deborah. Cheers.